Hi, a oh, very good evening. So having uh, like network issues, uh, let me just check out whether it is streaming live or not. I hope it is streaming live. Uh, I'm just checking out whether it is streaming or just give me two minutes, right? Yeah. So first, uh, let me ask you one question. So, can you see clearly the things which I have written on board? I mean, is it uh, really uh, clearly visible, or is there any problem with the clarity with what I have written on board? Can you see? starting our first virtual classroom session so every Tuesday we're going to have this uh, same concept like we'll be presenting uh, something some information on board and I'll try to simplify that and then we'll have a discussion pertaining to that so I'm having my uh, Mac here so that we can have this kind of live interaction simultaneously so along with the concept of classroom discussion we're trying to have so just now I made one video on different types of communication so we have this two-way communication which is not possible usually in lectures because in lectures only one person talks the others usually sleep so that's what happens in classroom so what we're trying here is simultaneously we'll try to present some information and get some questions from you so that we can have a two-way process a socratic method of communication so that's about uh, today's session so today we're going to talk about the presentation of statistical data I hope I'm audible or do you want me to raise my voice because this is the first time I'm trying this I don't know how it goes on because uh, the, my mobile is comparable at a greater distance than the usual live sessions so is it audible I mean uh, can I uh, maintain the same pace or do you want me to raise my voice okay Ravina is saying audible thank you okay great hi Ramesh Hi Gina. Hi Prithvi. Hi Ravina. Jaila. Jaila Jeha. Yeah. Ramesh, Swati, Fatima, Saeed, Regina, Ashi, Prithika. So everyone, Prithvi. Hi Abhishek. So all of you, a very good evening. So it's a kind of different experience for me all together now. So let's see how it goes on. Because usually in recorded videos, we have much more better lighting. So since we're going to have a lengthy session comparatively, I, I didn't really go with that bright light because it creates a lot of heat and there can be sweating in the process also, right? So I'm just uh, giving, uh, presenting with the same tube light. I mean the normal ordinary light. So I hope it goes on well, right? So today's topic for discussion is presentation of statistical data so what exactly does a data mean so why do we need this data and what is the importance of this data and how can we use this data in order to carry public health forward so as you all know in order to investigate or in order to inquire any particular issue or for example you're trying to do a survey you want to find out like how many people in your area are suffering from dental caries if that is an example of that is a context there you go individually take information have these oral screening programs and based on the findings there we collect some data we collect some rough data we just make entry of all the data and collection of data is like one side of the coin but how to interpret that data depends upon how you present the data so presentation of statistical data is very much important 
and this data can be categorized into a primary data as well as secondary data. So primary data is that which we collect data directly from an individual, like for example, as I said, the oral screening programs. So in order to understand the health or disease condition of an individual, for example, the data which we obtain is called as primary data. But on the other hand, the data which is obtained from other sources, like for example, you go to a dental college in a particular area or you go to a dental hospital in a particular area, retrieve all the information there with their permission and you collect data. So that comes under secondary data. So broadly we have two types of data, primary which is collected directly from the individual and secondary which is collected from other sources. So the best example for primary data is census. So every 10 years we have the census, right? So secondary data, hospital records, etc. So Presentation of this data is very important because it helps us to analyze, it helps us to analyze, interpret and to instill proper public health measures. If you know like how many people are suffering from caries in your local area, then you can go ahead with treatment camps, you can advise a necessary treatment which is customized to that particular community. So it has greater significance, right? So coming to presentation of data, as you all can see, so data can be presented in different formats. So we have presentation of data in form of tables. Again in tables, we have a simple table, compound table, a complex table, or even we have most importantly frequency distribution table. So that's for then tables. And data can also be presented in form of charts and diagrams. So we have these bar diagrams, flow charts, and we have these pie diagrams, pictograms, histograms. And to give you a best example, you have watched cricket, right? So in cricket, we have a lot many statistics being displayed in a simplified manner. Actually, there is a lot much complex calculation that's happening, but still we are able to easily understand the run rate, number of overs, the bowlers, uh, uh, I mean, a uh, lot many uh, important information can be presented in a simplified manner. Uh, for the best example would be, as I said, cricket, right? So uh, all these parameters. So that's one way of representing data. And we also have histogram, so histogram is nothing but pictorial description of frequency distribution table, which we'll discuss that later. So all this come under charts and diagrams. So line diagrams, pie charts, pictograms. So it's all this come under one category. And also information can be presented in form of statistical data, statistical maps, for example, scatter diagrams. So we'll try to understand what, what each of these parameters mean and what are the advantages or disadvantages of these ways of presenting data in a comparative manner, right? I hope you are able to follow what I am saying, right? Okay. Hi, Shruti, Mega. <laughs> Where is? Yeah, Dobridge, Vecher. Okay. Yeah, Sneha, glad to hear that. Thank you. Right. So first we will see what tables are. As you can see here, so if you observe, see, consider this as one component, right, till the source. This is again the separate entity. Because of space constraints, I have to literally uh, uh, combine all this stuff. So till here, right, so this is all one parameter. As you can see, we have the number for the table, the title of the table, and we have rows and columns with headings and footnotes. We call this as footnotes, right? So these are components of a table. So table is nothing but, I hope it's clear, right? Yeah. So tables are nothing but the simplest forms of presenting data. And table is often considered as the first step for analyzing or for interpreting data. That's very important, right? And as you can see here, we, we need to follow certain principles when we're drawing tables. So the principles include, General principles, we should name or we should number the table. So always when you are giving tables in your uh, I mean, library dissertation, seminars or whatever it is, tables have to be numbered for clarity, that's very important. And second thing, we should have a heading which is self-explanatory. So headings should be clear, concise and self-explanatory. And also as you can see here, we need to have columns and rows and the headings of columns and rows should be short, concise and self-explanatory. And 
we should arrange the information either in ascending or descending order or in alphabetical order so that for a viewer or for a person who is i mean who is viewing or watching that table it has to be very much clear right and also keynotes or footnotes it's not keynote it's footnotes it's present at the bottom and foot footnotes has to be clear if if at all necessary we need to give footnotes in this case we are discussing the census or population of certain states in india so the source is census 2001 right so as you can see we have states here and we have population in descending order right so these are some of the general principles which we need to follow while tabulating or while creating tables and most importantly now if i ask you a question like the source for this information is census 2001 so is it a primary data or is it a secondary data hi pooja very good So what kind of data is it? Because at the beginning I explained you the difference between primary and secondary. So the source for this data is census 2001. So is it a primary data or a secondary data? Okay. Some say primary, some say secondary. Okay. See, how did I obtain this information? How did I obtain this information? my source for example if i have tabulated this my source is census 2001 so i haven't really gone to public or i haven't really counted i didn't do it right so i have taken the record or the census record of 2001 so i have obtained information from other source rather than directly communicating with people right with individuals so it is secondary data so census the process of census is primary data it means well census calculation government officials go collect the data so that's primary data but i am tabulating this based on that data that is based on the census report so this comes under secondary right so don't get confused that's the reason why we have this kind of ambiguity so i was to discussion right i hope it's clear now so it is secondary even census data acts as secondary data yeah right so now let's move on to frequency distribution table so as the name itself indicates frequency distribution means the distribution of a variable in greater numbers in different groups so in frequency distribution table we have two important terms that is class intervals and frequencies so class intervals and frequencies so we need to understand this for example if i give you uh, like uh, the example which was quoted here is number of patients or different age groups who are admitted to hospital or who are hospitalized because of polio so number of patients or patients of different age groups who are admitted to a hospital because of polio so as you can see here the age group is divided convenient to see if you observe this table right away uh, like how do you feel you, you can see that clearly between different age groups we have different frequencies that is 0 to 4 years 35 i mean in that particular locality or in that particular hospital 35 uh, children are suffering from polio between the age group of 0 to 4 and as you can see here with increase in age the frequency is diminishing so we can interpret in a simpler manner in frequency distribution table and this gives us an idea of the frequency distribution in that particular group so the division of the entire uh, entire population or the observed values in this case the observed values are nothing but group of children with different age groups right so di division of children based on their age is called as class interval so class interval is nothing but in a given pair in a given set of observations dividing the observations into groups for our convenience is called as class interval then we have this term frequencies which is nothing but 
in a given class interval or in a given group in the maximum number of repetitions. So we have 35 children between age group of 0 to 4 suffering from polio. So that's frequency, right? So similarly we have other frequencies as well. So this is called as frequency distribution table. And as I said, if you observe this frequency distribution table, you can just make out that in a particular age group, the so-and-so number are being affected. And also we can easily tell the range. So it also explains you the range, right? Like from 0 to 19 years, the range, we have a frequency of minimum of 8 and maximum of 35. So even range can be calculated using this frequency distribution table. And the other advantage is it also helps us in understanding the shape of distribution. So in this case, the distribution is tapering. So we have more number here and less number here. So we have a tapered pattern in this case, right? So depending upon the data which we collect, this distribution varies, right? So frequency distribution table helps us in showing or observing at glance the number of individual observations which are present in a group. So it helps us in identifying the frequencies easily and also it shows range and also tells us the shape of distribution. And if you ask me a question like how many, I mean, we have collected some amount of data and we have divided that into class intervals. So what should be the maximum number of groups or class intervals? So as per the literature, the ma if, if the data which we collected is very large, the maximum number of class intervals or groups can be up to 20, but not more than 20. Because it's more, if it's more than 20, uh, obviously it will be more cumbersome and difficult to scan through, right? So they have given a limit where the maximum number of groups which we can place depending upon the amount of data is 20. If the data which is collected is minimal or small, then the minimum number of groups that we need to create in a frequency distribution table is 5. So minimum is 5, maximum is 20 class intervals or groups. And what about this division? So here if you observe, we have divided, uh, like we have this 5 years, right? 0 to 4, which means uh, first 5. I mean the difference is 5. Here the difference is 5. So what is the criteria for that division? So there is as such no such criteria. We need to divide it based on the fact that the distribution has to be equal. So here the division, I mean here the range is 5 years, here it's 5, here it's 5. So the frequency distribution of class intervals have to be equal. That's the only criteria we have here. So the maximum number of groups is 20, minimum is 5 and this class interval, like we have a lot, lot of data, we can divide it into 0 to 6, 6 to 12 or 13 to 18, right? So that division can take place uh, depending upon our convenience. However, the class intervals have to be equal. So these are some of the criteria which we need to keep in mind to understand frequency distribution table, right? I hope it's clear. So uh, are we doing fine or do you want me to continue at the same pace or increase the pace or decrease? Just let me know, right? Hi Neetu, good evening. Okay, okay, we'll continue at the same pace then, right? Is it okay? Okay, fine. Yeah. So, so far we have discussed about tables and frequency distribution table, right? So, different types of table, simple table. And if you are trying to compare the health or if you are trying to compare the incidence of caries or fluorosis or something, if you add up that parameter here, it becomes a complex table, right? So, we have different types of table and most importantly, frequency distribution table. I hope it's clear. Now, let's move on to charts and diagrams. So, we have, as you can see here, bar diagrams, right? bar diagrams. So these bar diagrams, they are simplest way of presenting data, right? However, the problem with these charts and diagrams is lot of information is hidden beneath. We, we, if we try to present all the information, then it's not possible to present information in form of bars and uh, charts or pie diagrams. So the simplest statistical information only can be presented using these diagrams, using these bar charts and diagrams. As you can see here, we have a simple bar diagram. We also have multiple bar diagram or component bar diagram. So as you can see here, we have females, number of females per 1000 male on y-axis and census year on x-axis. So every 10 years, 
how is the relation between number of females for every thousand males? Like how many number of females are present for every thousand males? Right? So it's the simplest form of presenting data as you can see. Right? And also we have different types like simple, multiple and component. So this is an example for simple because we are considering only one variable that is number of females for every thousand males. If I say multiple, so multiple in the sense uh, we will have another component here. Right? We are trying to compare two variables. So if we compare two variables, then we call it as multiple bar diagram. And if I say component, so component means you will have the bar divided into two, three or multiple segments. Right? And most importantly, the length of bar or the area of rectangle is proportional to the quantity of the variable. If the length of bar is more in this case, the number of females per thousand males is obviously more. Right? If the length of bar is less, then obviously, so this reflects the quantity, right? So that's very important. Length or area of bar reflects the quantity of the variable which we have measured, right? So that's pertaining to bar diagrams and yeah. So bar charts are easy to prepare and enable values to be compared visually. So as you can see, we have vertical arrangement of bars, right? We can even have horizontal arrangement, but vertical arrangement, horizontal, anything can be followed. Now, coming to histogram. So histogram is nothing but this is very important. I mean, in at undergraduation level, we have this as commonly asked two marks question, right? So histogram is nothing but pictorial representation of frequency distribution table. So the frequency distribution table represented in form of a bar diagram, a special form of bar diagram, right, histogram. So that's called as histogram. As you can see here, we have written, I hope it, you can see that, right. So we have diastolic blood pressure values here on x-axis and the number of individuals on y-axis. So they have done a study. Uh, in order to evaluate the diastolic blood pressure in females age group 45 to 65 as given in part. So as you can see here, the length of the bar represents the frequency. So as you can see here we have frequency and we have class intervals here. So the length of the bar or the area of this each block or rectangle represents the frequency. So for example in this case if you observe we have this 50 mmHg, 90, 135. So mostly the values are clustering around 90. So the frequency of distribution is mostly concentrated around 90. So the same frequency distribution represented in form of this bar diagram, a special form of bar diagram is called as histogram. Right, so that's very important. And this histogram, when the midpoints of these histogram blocks, let me just use another color. So if the midpoints of these blocks are traced and if they are joined, right? So let me just draw that here. Mm, I think it will be clear if I draw it. So if I try to join these midpoints, I will get something like this. Right? So this is called as frequency polygon. So frequency distribution table or frequency distribution, the information can be represented either in the form of histogram or it can be represented in the form of frequency polygon. And this frequency polygon can be obtained by joining the midpoints of the rectangular blocks or histogram blocks and then by tracing them, right? So that's about frequency polygon. So both frequency polygon and histogram, they present frequency distribution tables, right? So that's very important. And then we have line diagrams. So line diagrams are nothing but they show or they reflect the changes that are happening with time. For example, in this case, on x-axis we have years, 1972, 73, 74, and so on. On y-axis we have number of malarial cases in million. So as you can see, we have different uh, parameters here, right? So we have this continuous line representing the world 
the dotted lines representing Southeast Asia region and these a different pattern representing other countries. So as you can see, with time, the number of cases, malarial cases are increasing in case of a world scenario and then they're decreasing throughout the world. In Southeast Asia regions also we can see the pattern, also in other regions. So this gives us an idea of changes in a particular variable with respect to time. So that's nothing but line diagram. So line diagrams show the trend of events with passage of time. I hope it's clear. And then we have these pie charts. So we're all familiar with these pie charts. So pie chart for that, we need to have an idea regarding the angle of a circle. So circle, full circle, we have 360 degrees, right? So usually the information given in pie charts is represented in percentage, right? So that's what I'm to pie chart. Here in this case, we have 66% of developing countries and 34% of developed countries. A, a, a simple example. So pie chart is another simplest way of representing data. And you know what? These pie charts are favorite to us, to us in the sense to a common man because it's easy to understand, right? But these are considered inferior to bar charts because a lot of information can be. I mean, when you compare these bar charts with pie charts, we can represent or we can give more information in bar charts compared to pie charts. So for statistician. Pie charts are not so favored. So pie charts are inferior to bar charts in providing information. So uh, that's important information which we need to understand here, right? And then we have pictogram. So pictogram I did not explain you because pictograms you can see all over outside, right? When you're traveling, you can see a lot of many posters, such bar, any government policies or any ads of multinational companies or jewelries. Also, we have this pictogram, right? So that's the best way to give information to man on street. So the exact words I quoted from Park. So it's a best way to provide information to man on street in the sense to common man, to a layman, right? So it helps us in delivering the message, required message to public or to masses in a simplified manner. So that's the power of pictogram, right? And don't get confused between histogram and pictogram, right? Because both are running the same. You should be careful when you have a question from this. So pictograms, form of bar charts, okay. So it's given that pictograms are a form of bar charts. So, I mean, if you observe the part textbook, I mean, I've shared that in our WhatsApp group also. So they've given the, I mean, the illustration of a person or of a doctor and a doctor population ratio represented in forms of bar. So pictogram can also be considered as a form of bar chart. And then we have finally statistical maps. So for example, we have the scatter diagram. So scatter diagrams help us to analyze the relation between two variables. By the way, statistical maps can be of two types, shaded maps or dot maps. And this scatter diagram, if you see, we have two variables. Fat, which is consumed in grams per day, and sugar, which is consumed in grams per day, as you can see here. So we are comparing two variables. So this was actually a study which was done by few authors regarding the amount of uh, sugar and fat consumption in 41 countries, right? So they have proved that rich people or those who are earning well, uh, when they consume uh, more fat, they obviously also consume sugar. So sugar and fat consumption, they are linearly proportional in their study. So if you observe here, we have various dots which are clustering around this line, right? So we have a diagonal line here and these dots are clustering around this line. If this is a case, it indicates that both variables are proportional, linearly proportional. If the dots are scattered somewhere here, then it means the two variables which we are testing, they are not linearly proportional. So that's the interpretation which we can obtain from the scatter diagram, right? I hope it's clear. So scatter diagram shows the relation between two variables. If dots cluster around a straight line, it shows evidence of relationship in linear nature, right? So these are uh, uh, statistical maps or scatter diagrams, right? So this is in brief, various means of presenting statistical data. So we need to understand what data is, different types of data and few examples if possible. And what is the significance of presenting the data? 
no matter how much data we have uh, if it is in lump sum then it's of no use we cannot interpret it right so the best way to push public health to a next level is by obtaining data and then tabulating or presenting data and based on the evaluation or based on the results we need to modify our public health program so that we can deliver health in a more effective manner to public right so we have different ways of presenting data like tables so in tables we have simple frequency distribution table charts diagrams so we have seen about bar charts and also we have seen about what is histogram and frequency polygon line diagrams pie charts pictogram and finally scatter diagram right i hope it's clear so if you have any queries you can just drop your queries i'll be live for another uh, few minutes right it's already 30 minutes right so i can stay for another 15 20 minutes so i hope it's clear so how how did you feel like uh, was that uh, like how is the session like uh, do you find it uh, convenient to understand or uh, do you think we need to make uh, any improvements if necessary Yes, Jaina. Histogram is a special type of bar diagram. Yeah, posters do come under pictogram. Yes, that's true, Nidhi. So now we have more lights because we're done with session because we have these lights there will be a lot of reflection here right so i've switched off those lights intentionally Okay, Abhishek. Awesome, interesting. Glad to hear that, Abhishek. Priti. Okay, Priti. Thank you for the feedback. Swapnil, Prithvi. Okay, you all liked it. Glad to hear that. Richa, you're welcome. Gina, Jala, Sneha, Mega. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot for your feedback. So let's try to improve and let's try to do more of these virtual classroom sessions, right? So as I said, uh, previously, as I said, I made one video on uh, communication, a recorded video for RE classes. So as I said, like a conventional classroom is like, uh, see, no matter how much we try, we try to interact with students, we have that kind of barrier. Like in the sense, they, uh, they find it embarrassing to ask questions in front of others or uh, even if you try to ask them, like uh, you obviously we feel embarrassed or we have the kind of uh, gap between, right? So the concept here is to replicate the same in the sense, give information, authentic information in as much simplified manner as possible and simultaneously have this two-way communication because only through interaction and only through feedback and only through this kind of a two-way interaction the session is going to be more interesting and it's like you can add up your own opinions and you can add up your own information so that every one of us will get uh, much benefited right rather than one person talking and others sleeping as i said that's what happens in a uh, real classroom scenario right so that's how it's going on yeah so one multiple choice questions yeah we do have several multiple choice questions mm. anyways we're going to have a mcq session on thursday morning right so we'll try to post questions pertain to uh, yesterday's topic today's topic and also uh, tomorrow's topic so all these textbook discussions virtual classroom sessions i'll definitely post multiple choice questions on a thursday morning right because I was not sure whether you can really take out, uh, take up the questions that I give you because already uh, it's like I'm feeding you with a lot of information. So I thought like, okay, let me, draw, let me not just discuss MCQs for today. Uh, if you're really interested in then from next time onwards, we'll try to have the MCQ session simultaneously 
pertain to that topic. It makes it even more interesting, isn't it? Nibi, yes, sir, this is awesome approach because you can see what we hear, audio vision works. Oh, glad to get that, Nibi. Sirisha. Yeah, so that's, that's the objective here, to bring it more close to the real classroom, the virtual classroom. And also, I'll talk about Michael Sandals at the end of this video. Okay, any MCQs regarding this topic? Princess, thank you, sir. I I have what to do tonight. I didn't get you ready, no? I have what to do tonight. Okay, Gina, MCQ is clear all of That's true. Okay, awesome, Saida. Okay, you want MCQs also? Sure. Let's incorporate that from next virtual classroom session, right? Minaxi Saho. You're welcome, Minaxi. Minakshi? Okay. Okay, so uh, or let me just give you some key points pertaining to the same session, right? Since uh, I haven't really uh, collected any multiple choice questions pertaining to this topic, but Thursday morning we'll definitely have MCQs from this topic, from Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays topic, because Monday and Wednesday, textbook discussions and few topics, and Tuesday, virtual classroom. So we'll collect some MCQs from these topics and we'll present, I'll, I'll ask you the same in Thursday's morning live session, right? Okay, Rupali, sure. You're welcome, uh, Prithvi, sure. Glad to hear that, Richa. Right, so as I said, so I asked you one question initially, right? So source here is census data. In fact, that was one question which I've seen somewhere, I don't remember. So if you collect information from census 2001 data, so it's like uh, secondary data, right? So primary data directly from the individuals. So as one of you asked, right? So histogram, it's nothing but bar diagram, pie diagram. So we have these options given in one question. So histogram is a type of, is a special type of bar diagram. And even pictogram for that matter, because it's given directly in par. So we have one picture where, as, as I said, we have a picture of a doctor and the population, doctor or doctor population ratio in various countries represented in form of horizontal bars. So even pictogram is a type of bar diagram. And also uh, like uh, these frequency polygon and histogram. What do they? What data do they represent? They represent frequency distribution. So that's another question which you can expect. And in charts and diagrams, okay. Let me ask you this question. In charts and diagrams, we have discussed all this, right? So which among these is simplest form of information or a simplest way of giving information to a common man? So which among these charts and diagrams can be easily understood by common man? You try answering that question. In the meantime, we'll discuss what Bernice asked. Bernice, you say, sir, correlation of height and weight of children is best represented by so obviously when you have two parameters and see usually if you observe, if you have this common observation, if you observe in general, with increase in height, the weight proportionally increases, right? Up to some age, up to some age, especially in children. So children who are uh, having less height comparatively, they're obviously having less weight. So that's the reason why I assume that it's given as scatter diagram because in scatter diagram, as you can see here, we have two variables and if you try to obtain uh, information from a normal case scenario, if you observe a group of 100 children and plot this scatter diagram, obviously the dots are going to cluster around the straight line because based on our common observation, with increase in height, the weight obviously increases, right? The bone weight, etc. So I feel that's the reason why scatter was given as an appropriate answer in that particular question. So the question is correlation of height and weight of children is best represented by. 
So that's the reason why I have explained you that scatter diagram best explains the relation between two variables. And if the dots are clustering around a straight line, it means they are linearly proportional. Okay, Bernice. Yeah, to my question, I said uh, which information or which type of um, diagram or uh, chart can be easily understood by a common man. So, is it pictogram or is it pie chart? It's pictogram or pie chart. So, majority of you say pictogram. Yes, it is pictogram because pictogram can be understood even by a man on street. So, that's the simplest form of representing information right if you observe outside as i said we see these posters and all we have all these pictures you never see a lot of information given or a lot of uh, matter or words or sentences given on a poster we have very limited words but we have these uh, pictures right so pictograms are best way to take information to public to common man okay or you have any questions you can share so line diagrams are those so which among the following plots the change in variability or change in variables with relation to time so which among the following ways of representation of data plots a change in variable with time so obviously it will be line diagram right so anyways we will come up with more multiple choice questions from this particular topic right so you have any queries any, any doubts uh, any ambiguity you can just post them here we'll conclude it Okay, Abhishek, you say page 599, Soban Peter, 5th edition. Mm, sorry, I'm not referring to Soban Peter for now. Do you have Soban Peter with you? Okay. So, what is that picture? If possible, take a pic and share it in our group. Right. Yes, Bernice, you can. You can ask us this topic as well. So since you said yesterday's topic, so while explaining you the mode, right, I, I gave you some wrong information. So I corrected that and I've given you in the description below that same video. So in a series of observations, if only one variable is repeating maximum number of times, we call it as uni mode. If no variable is repeating, then we call it as no mode, no modal distribution. But if two variables in a given series of data are having equal frequency like if two variables are repeating for same number of times then we call it as bimodal if more than two variables are repeating for equal number of times we call it as multimode you can refer the description of yesterday's video i've given you clearly with examples like what is unimode what is no mode what is bimodal and what is multimodal distribution Anything else? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, but it's got the doubt cleared while typing. Okay, great. So let's conclude this session, right? Shall we? So we'll come up with, uh, so this is really exciting for me because uh, I, I never thought like this would go so fine. I was always in this uh, ambiguity, like whether this would go well or not, but I can see the projection which is very clear. I mean, we have these uh, lights here, 
I mean, if you switch off the roof lights, I think it's much more better, right? In this area, particular, right? So we'll go ahead with this session as usual from next week, and if possible, if possible, I'll try to increase the frequency as well, right? So as you all requested, and even I feel the same. So topic discussion, and after the topic, we'll also have discussion of a wide range of multiple choice questions pertaining to that topic in specific so that we can really enjoy, master and as you said, they test our knowledge and understanding. Right? So we should have MCQ discussions from next virtual classroom discussion as well. Right? When diagrams are special forms, they come under, I mean, when diagram as such is a, a special name or different name, right? So it can be included under charts and diagrams. So it comes under charts and diagrams. So even I thought of it while preparing for this topic. Yes, we have this Venn diagrams. Obviously, they can't be included under pi, they can't be included under pictograms or other forms, right? So as such, it's a separate entity. Yeah, fine. So, by the way, I'm really sorry. First of all, happy Independence Day for all of you. So, I should have started with that. But anyways, it's fine. Uh, I, I'm glad that I at least remember it now. So, uh, happy Independence Day, all of you. So, let's keep the spirit of our country going, right? So, it's not like we have to do something great for our country. It's We need to start from within. So starting from within, so be the change you want to see in the world as Mahatma rightly said. So rather than blaming the external factors, if we try to master ourselves, if we try to understand ourselves better and if we change, then obviously the entire nation is going to have a much more brighter future. Right? So na nation as such is nothing but, it's not a separate entity, it's we. So we all together form our nation, right? If we want our nation to be good, uh, to be prosperous then we need to take care of ourselves first and don't call it as being selfish it should be called as self-care right i hope it's clear right so once again happy independence day all of you and glad that we have our first virtual classroom session on independence day and this will be there in my memory for a long long time right Yeah, and happy Krishna Janmashtami to all of you as well. Sure, Prithvi, we'll have more and more discussions on moral path also. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, Saida. Sirisha, Nidhi, thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful wishes. Right, so see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's live, we're going to have a textbook discussion on means of uh, dispersion right so we'll have discussion pertaining to the same tomorrow yeah sure sure please right so happy independence day once again all of you have a pleasant sleep enjoy your day enjoy your preparation right so see you tomorrow morning sorry tomorrow evening at 9 pm for textbook discussion right so uh, i think i've already shared uh, a few of our friends also already shared the information in form of soft copies i think abhishek and ramesh Right, so if you want, I can reshare that again and make sure that you have a hard copy and uh, notes along with you. Right, see you. Bye, take care.